This is going to be part one of a six-part series. I'm going to try and explain at least six different methods you can use to support walls um, in a floor. So this could be in a series of floors, multiple story buildings, uh, four or five stories, or uh, a single story build, I mean a single story building with a basement or a two story building. Um, so these are just a few ways that it's common construction practice to support non-bearing or load-bearing walls that are going to be um, supported by some type of a floor or its uh, structural components. Now what we're looking at here, I got the ground drawn in. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. And you can see that there are footings here. And the footings support the walls. This will be part of the concrete foundation. Support the walls that support the joists that support the wall. So the load from this wall would transfer to the floor joists, which in turn would transfer down to the concrete foundation. Now this particular system here, this wall, is supported by each individual floor joist. So since it's perpendicular to the floor joist, then it's actually being supported. There's not a concentrated load on this particular uh, this particular type of framing. There would be a concentrated load, let's say, if I turned the wall in a different direction. If I turned it and the entire wall sat on top of one floor joist, then we would have a problem. And of course, I'm going to show you that uh, in one of the other videos uh, for the doublers, where you can actually double up the floor joist. Go around here. Better idea. Let's take a look at the footing. You can see here that uh, is a footing. Now I, I have a 12 by 12 footing drawn in here, uh, but the footing might be might need to be larger depending upon the weight of the uh, structures above. Now don't forget that the floor joy sizes and the footings can all change with the different type of whatever the uh, type of structure is. So, uh, and, and, and the wall studs could actually change too. So one thing that, that you could take into consideration would be the size of the footing would vary. The size of the wall, instead of a two by four, it might need to be a two by six. Uh, and the height of the wall could make a difference. The floor joists, um, you could have 2x10s or 2x14s or even truss joists. And of course, they can be spanned uh, or spaced anywhere from you know 12 inches on center to 24 inches on center, depending upon the load also. So by adding a few more joists into this floor system, you, you would actually increase the load carrying capaci capacity, which I'm sure that makes sense to, to most of you. Add more wood in then, but it wouldn't make any sense. I mean, we can't get carried away with, you know, let's just say that we beef up the floor and we put these joists at eight inches on center and but we don't have the load carrying capacity below then we're not we're it was that wouldn't make any sense and again this is where a structural engineer's job comes in they're going to figure the foundation sizes the wall sizes floor joists spacing and so on so this is uh, one way to do it and this would be common as long as the walls run perpendicular to the floor joist system. So off to the next video and I will put a link at the end of each video to the next video. Go to the website for more videos on walls and engineering. I will also have a complete list of the videos in this series along with other videos that I have already made. 
video.gregvan.com structural engineering or go to the gregvan.com website any one of them and look for the video box in the upper left hand corner once you get to the video website click on the structural engineering link and you should be good to go you should be where you need to be